Hi, welcome to my channel, Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash, and if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and any modifications that I might have made to patterns or um, anything that I might have learned along the way. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. So it's Wednesday, the 13th of September, and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia, and I've got a pretty packed episode. So I'm going to start with finished objects and I am wearing um, one. This is the Pie Camisole by Nabita Jure and I use Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in I think the colorway Soft Aqua. And I used the needles that were recommended in the pattern which is a 2.5 millimeter for the body and a 2 millimeter for the ribbing. Uh, my gauge was a little bit tighter. Um, I got 35 stitches over 4 inches instead of uh, 31. And so I made sort of uh, in between the double excess and the excess. So I'll stand up and show you and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So I am so delighted with how it's, um, how it's come out. I'm wearing a strapless bra, which you can't see at all because the armholes come up um, plenty high enough, but a, a regular bra I, you would definitely see. So I, I don't love wearing strapless bras. I tend to sort of do that with them, but um, you know, I can, I can live with it um yeah and I think it's really it's a really nice um nice design it's called the pie camisole because it looks um like the symbol pie and being a maths teacher that obviously appeals to me right so um changes that I made aside from making something between the extra extra small and the extra small um I did add a few extra rows in the back because the pattern lengths said they were the same but there was actually less rows in the back than in the front so I just added a few extra rows in the back to make them the same so maybe I think it was about four extra rows um, I didn't do the Italian um, bind off I was a bit concerned about it stretching out too much and I was actually also quite happy with a regular bind off so I did use for the armholes uh, and when I say regular I mean just a normal bind off but in pattern so knit the knits pearl the pearls and you know knit two whatever work two pass one over I did use a 2.25 millimeter for the armholes and I did that initially on the neckline but then I um un it was actually a little bit too loose around the neck so I undid it and redid it just on the two millimeter needle and that was fine and I probably could have done the same on the armholes but um you can't really you can't undo that now so and it's fine like I'm actually it's not bothering me at all and I don't think it's flaring so yes, anything else? Um, I'll just do a little, um, a few other things that I did different, or just some information about the pattern. So my bust is a 32 inch bust. Um, when I measured this across after blocking, it's 28 inches. So I've got four inches of negative ease. I could have probably added a little bit of waist shaping. It just knits straight down and I did that. It's not hugely baggy there, but it's probably got a little bit of room. I could have maybe just taken a couple of stitches out slowly going down nothing too dramatic but maybe just going down a little bit but it's it's fine i'm really happy so um 28 inches around and from the tip here down is 12 inches so it's about two inches and then another 10 inches and yeah it sits at a really good place like it sits just above the these jeans that's my belly button right there um and it's fine on the back. I can move around. You can just see like a, a little bit of skin there, but not, you know, it's fine. This isn't work appropriate for my work. Um, everyone's work's potentially different, but for my work, it's pretty conservative. You wouldn't show this much um, shot. I work at a, um, a private school um, here in Sydney and that just wouldn't, that would be too much shoulder. Just, I'd feel, I don't know. It would be probably like fine if I had a cardigan on or a jacket, but then the air, rooms are so air conditioned, I'd want to take it off. And there would be a few eyebrows raised, I think. Um, so I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing it to work, but that's fine. I mean, I'm happy wearing it with jeans. I could wear it with a skirt in the evening. I think for my work, just it, it needs to cover this portion. So it's a great pattern. I'll definitely make it again, but it can't go in the, it can't go in the work wardrobe at least. I mean, I could wear it to, I also teach knitting at Skein Sisters, my local yarn store. I could definitely wear it there, um, but just not to my school. Right, so, oh, and I love the yarn. The Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino, I would totally use the yarn again. It weighs 115 grams, so I use just over two balls. And um, so I've got about 40 grams 
40 grams left. I'm not sure what I'll do with that. Um, it could make a nice baby because it's cotton merino. It's really quite soft. Could make a nice baby hat or uh, I don't have any babies in my life right now to knit for, but that, you know, things change. So uh, not that anything hopefully will change in that area anytime soon. My kids are only 20, 18 and 15. So I don't, I'm not expecting grandkids anytime soon, but I don't sort of, most of my friends, they're not in that stage either. So but you know, yarn doesn't go off, so I'll just put it aside and um, when I, or I could make something stripey. I do plan to use this yarn again for sure. So that could just get put aside for some kind of stripey project. And I do love a good stripey project. Right, so that's actually not my only finished object. Um, this is quite a, a small finished object, but I thought I'd show you as well. My in-laws are visiting from the US and um, my um, stepmama-in-law, she has these, so she knits and crochets, um, but mostly washcloths and like um, koozies for drinks because she likes her knitting and crochet. She just likes it to be something that she doesn't have to think too much, you know, and I think that's, you know, really great. Like if you, if that's just something that you enjoy when you, you know, um, but you don't, it doesn't occupy too much of your brain power, then, you know, and that's for me, I love stocking it in the round. So anyway, she, um, brought this uh, washcloth and it's not one that she made but it's one that she purchased from like a festival or something and she really likes it but wasn't sure how the pattern was made so um, you know asked me if I could figure out how to make it so I did little you know the, the math side of me appreciated that challenge and it's not it's not super complicated you just um, cut, cast on with three stitches you have a center stitch where you increase on either side every other row and it's garter and then you get to the longest bit and then you decrease so I made um, in, in doing it I made um, one with just some I don't even know what this this is cotton yarn that my um, well, it's, her name's Cindy that Cindy um, brought for me uh, years ago and I have had like a huge ball of it Ooh, so I just made one and yeah, I, I do love a good washcloth. I'm not sure if this is for me the best design because obviously like you want your washcloths to dry out. Um, and so this is already double layer, but it might be just kind of nice for actually washing the dishes. Um, it's, it's soft enough to use for the face, but um, yeah, anyway, it's a finished object. And I always like, I do actually use these for washing the dishes and then just chuck them in the washing machine when they start to get a bit smelly. Right, so that's my second finished object. Up to my whips now. Right, my first work in progress is the camisole number five. And this is by My Favourite Things Knitwear. And I'm using um, Volmai's, Volmai's Lace Garn in the colourway Schwiefel. And I have a 100 gram ball of it um, because it was from a kit. Right, I'm really happy with how this is coming along. Um, I'm using... Uh, one size smaller for needles so the pattern said to use three millimeter needles and I'm using 2.75 millimeter needles just because I like um, I already had made a dress with this yarn and used 2.75 mil needles and like the fabric although it wasn't a ribbed dress so I'm not really sure why I felt that that applied here but anyway doesn't matter that's what I'm using 2.75 mil needles I had, I think last week when I showed it, I had done the front and I'd only just started the back. So this is the, this is the front here. It's got a bit more of a, um, a V. The back is more straight. It looks tiny, but it fully, it really, really stretches out. So I hadn't done the neckline yet either. So I um, finished the back and that's, they're both just on needles at the moment. And because I just wanted to get an idea of how it was going to fit, which is a bit tricky with the ribbing, but I just wanted to get a bit of an idea. I actually ended up picking up the stitches and doing the double knit um, neckline. And now that was, that was a bit of a handful because, so I picked up with, I used one needle size smaller, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. I followed other people's directions. The pattern says to pick up three out of every four stitches, but Pretty much everyone said pick up two out of three because it was flaring if you didn't so i guess this is one of the nice things about knitting a pattern that's been out for a little while um you get to sort of the benefit of everyone's notes on ravelry so which i always do before i start doing anything on a pattern i take a look at people's notes and their projects and see what they any modifications they made or 
um, you know, little hiccups along the way. So I did only pick up two out of three and that got me to 198 stitches instead of 220, so quite a few smaller. And I was also using a smaller needle size. Um, so I did, I think, seven times two rows for double knitting. So you know, he, with double knitting, you knit, slip, knit, slip, etc., and then you slip, purl, slip, purl. So it's sort of every row. Anyway, if I go around, I count it as a row, so or around. So I did 14 rounds, but they only look like seven. And then I um, and then I did the tubular bind off. Um, so with double knitting, you kind of have to do that. But it was actually, as I was doing it, I was using this needle. So one um, 16 inch, um, which is 40 centimeter needle. Um, but because there was 198 stitches on the needles, that's a lot to fit on a small needle. But I couldn't use a, a 24 inch needle um, because of the slip stitches. It just doesn't, it's not that big. There's a lot of stitches on the needles, but it doesn't stretch very much because of all the slipping. So what I ended up doing was I used two 2.5 millimeter needles that were about 60 centimeters or 24 inches in length and did it like knitting on two circulars. So I'd knit along one and then knit along the other, um, you know, like knitting socks on two circulars. So I did that with the, um, with the neckline because it was just becoming too awkward to knit on this. However, you know, talk about awkward though, I had four needles hanging off this. Not only did I have four needles, because this is on this was on hold, and then two needles for the neckline. Not only that, I only have one ball of this yarn. So, and I'm knitting the outside on the body, and just because I didn't want to break the yarn, I um, started pulling from the center to knit the um, neckline. So I had the outside attached here, the inside here, and four needles. You know, I just could not wait for this bit to be finished. Anyway, after all that, I did actually bind it off. I have tried it on. I can actually probably try it on over what I'm wearing now. Um, so it's got a very high, have I got it the right way? I hope so. Hang on, <laughs> I didn't even, I can't hang on, let me just see. I think so, anyway. So it is a very high neckline and like if I push this all the way back where this is where I'm supposed to actually start joining. All right, so there's there's obviously a lot of stretch in there and now there's more to come with the knitting. There's also an extra double knitting band around here. Um, but obviously you can see it's, you know, it's very much racer back in its racer front, racer back in its style. Um, and so I, I wanted to sort of see would that be is it ready to, and do I need to cast on any stitches under the arms? Do I need to go down any further? People, when I've seen projects on Ravelry, this actually comes quite a fair way down. So I don't, I'm reluctant to sort of knit any further. I think it probably will be like, and what I did was I actually, when I had this blocking, I had this on um, the bed and then I put this, over it and stretch it out and it actually seems like it's going to be fine so um, I think I am ready now to join and knit in the round but what I'll do is I'll join knit in the round maybe do about two inches and then I'll try it on like you need at least an inch or two to, to just stabilize it and have something on there and so I'll do that I'll join it I won't cast on any stitches under the arms um, I won't do any more on the back I'll just do it as it is, as the pattern says, and then try it on and see how I like it. And if I think, you know, no, I need to go back a couple of inches is not a big deal. Anyway, so that's the, that's camisole number five um, by my favorite things knitwear. Oh, I just remembered something um, actually about the pie camisole. I'll mention it now just because I'm thinking about it. Um, with the ribbing, um, the sorry the ribbing on the um on the sides is knit back and forth but the ribbing on the neckline and the bottom is knit in the round so i noticed like i just wasn't loving the tension um there were a couple of reasons i didn't like this one in the round as much um because the needle that i was using the tips were a bit long and it was just a bit um it was a bit hard getting the stitches around so i am ordering some more two millimeter needles that have shorter shorter tips but the other suggestion that Karen who's Kazurina girl mentioned she said that she actually likes the look of in the round ribbing better on the wrong side and like 
I had never even thought to check that there was any difference between them, but there actually really is. So what um, she recommended was do it like a do a German short row and um, and knit the and knit the ribbing inside out. Which of course ribbing like it's going to look exactly the, well. Technically, it's still knit one purl one either way, but it actually does look nicer. I don't know if you can see that. I might show it later. It looks much nicer this on the inside. So I knit this inside out, then. Um, than this way. The knit stitches just look a bit sloppier and a bit bigger, whereas what was a knit on this side is a purl on this side. They just present like neater. How good is that? I had no idea. This is, I've, I've learned so much from this. I mean, I, I like that in doing this channel, perhaps I'm teaching some things, but I love what I'm learning. I feel so lucky. So thank you, Karen, for that suggestion. And I've been knitting for years and years and years and I've never, not only, I've just never even noticed that. Like the things that if you're not looking for, anyway, thank you, Karen, fantastic idea. And I will do that from now on. Um, obviously it doesn't work if it's a twisted rib because you know, I mean, it would be fine if it was double twisted rib, like you're actually twisting knits and pearls, but if it was a twisted rib and it's, it's awkward twisting pearls. So anyway, I like the look of my twisted rib from the right side. I'm quite happy with that. It's just my regular one by one rib. I haven't liked as much. Um, yeah, anyway, that was a great tip. So thank you very much. Anyway, so that was back to camisole number five, but I'm back, back to my whips now. So I've done um, one whip, the um, camisole number five, and that's once I get onto the rest of the body and it's just two by two rib, I think that will that will move quite quickly actually. Um, Cause it was, a, it was quite fiddly with all the little bits and pieces um, up until this point and especially with needles and things hanging off it. Oh, there is still that double um, double knitting on the side to go. That will be a bit slow, but at least the rest of the body should be pretty quick. Right, whip number two is the Skimmer Socks. Um, this is coming along really nicely, actually. In fact, I've finished one. So I've got a half finished object. That's my um, sock number one. And how cute, it's so cute, I love it. And it fits, it's quite snug. Um, so this is the Skimmer Socks Revisited by Sheila Toy Stromberg. I think this yarn is knit picks for Leechy, but I'm not 100% sure, because um, I, I have no evidence of either the yarn or the previous project, because this is leftover yarn. So I have no idea what I made with the original, probably socks, but anyway, I don't have them and I don't have a record of the yarn in, in Ravelry. So I think it's knit picks for lychee. The reason I thought it was mustache yarns is because they match so well. Like they're, they're really almost perfectly matched. So at least at the moment they're going okay. So I've been mostly knitting on these. So this is the second sock. You knit, you do a Judy's Magic cast on, you increase up and then you put some stitches on hold. Then you just work the bottom of the foot flat. Then you just do a few little heel increases, which I'm up to now. So now I've been knitting on this when I've been going on walks and it's been totally fine to knit on for walking up to this point. From this point on, um, on the sock, you're up, you actually start doing short rows for the heel. Then you do the heel flap and then you pick up, which is like, you know, knit one, slip one. And then you pick up stitches around um, and do the ribbing. And so like from this point, it's no longer um, walking knitting. I actually have to um, I have to sit and do it. And it's not even portable. Like I couldn't stand and knit. I could sit, um, you know, pay a bit of attention with short rows. And it's also not a pattern. This is my third pair. So it's not a pattern that I've really automated yet. So yeah, I kind of, I have to pay attention at this point, but I've got like maybe five grams to go and this weighs 16 grams. So for 11 grams, it's very portable. For the last five grams, it's a bit of paying attention. But these are actually quite nice and snug. And if you're looking for no-show socks that don't slip down into your foot, this is fantastic. And in fact, I don't think I've ever bought a pair of commercial socks that don't slip into my foot at some point. And I've worn these, uh, my other two pairs, all day um, and no problem at all. It stays up completely and they don't show. You might just see that tiny little, see it's got a couple little bit of short rows in the back, um, that tiny little bit peeking through. Um, and you could you could eliminate that anyway if you wanted. It's only like maybe there's two only two pairs of short rows there. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm just delighted with these. I love these I, and I um, and I wear them. I'm wearing them all the time. So I definitely want to make more. This, um, yeah, anyway, it might take 
it's very different to the muscle bra, which is mostly round and round, because the you know for for two thirds of the sock, it's mostly autopilot. Um, anyway, yes, very happy with that, and it's so it's so pretty. Mm, okay, right. Um, whip. So that's whip number two. Whip number three is the Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. So this is. Um, this is again yarn that I don't know what it is. I do know I I know where I got it. I got it as a gift yarn from the craft sessions retreat in the Yarra, Yarra, Yarra Valley, which is just outside Melbourne back in 2017. But I don't know what it is, and I, it's also leftover. I had 66 grams, and I don't know what I made out of the other 34 grams. So anyway, it doesn't matter. I do know it's DK though, and so this is the Sophie scarf. I've got a stitch marker. I'm obviously on the decreases now. I've got about 15 grams left and I'm not sure how many stitches, probably about, um, anyway, maybe about 20. So I increased until I got to halfway through the yarn. Now the large size says 33 stitches. I think I made it up to 35 and I thought, look, I'm going to use all the yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with what's left. So I'll use all of it. So I got to 35 and then I started the decreases. So I've put a marker here, which sort of helps keep me on track so that, you know, I, I do the decreases when the pattern tells me to. Um, the I-cord edging is really lovely everywhere except on where I'm doing the increases and decreases. It's a bit messy. So I think somebody suggested maybe doing the increases or decreases one stitch further in. And I might like, I might try that if I make a second one. I'm still, I'm in doubt about the wearability of this for me. Uh, for me, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll definitely finish it and I'll block it and I'll see, like, I'm just not sure. Um, you know, I'm not really a scarf accessory kind of girl, but maybe that's because I don't have any. Maybe once I have some, I will be. Uh, I definitely don't like the back of my neck being cold. So, and this isn't something that's gonna like drag in your soup or whatever. So anyway, like I'm sure it will be done for next week and blocked and I will report back as to whether I wear it or not. Um, I mean, I already have yarn for a second one. Um, this is the um, Skein Merino DK, DK Cashmere, Merino Cashmere DK that I um, dyed last week, over dyed last week. So I will, if I, if I think I'm gonna, either way, it can be a gift, right? So that's a full skein. Look how messy that is. That's gonna be really interesting to wind. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> later um anyway hopefully that will be finished well it should be look that's not much is it and this is i can walk and knit on this too so this is another walking and knitting project and yeah really like it i mean i really like how it's looking but i don't know it has to be functional right i have to actually wear it if i'm not going to wear it what's the point so fingers crossed i actually wear it and i think it will be a great um i can see i'm still pushing my bra up it's a little bit annoying anyway uh, I don't think I could wear this without a bra, to be honest. I think it would be a little bit too... I haven't tried it on without a bra, but yeah, might be like my Audrey top. I could totally wear that without... I have worn it without a bra. It's really fine. This one, I think probably just with a... Maybe if I made a black one, I could wear it without a bra. That's interesting, actually. I'm going to see if they sell the cotton merino in a black yarn or even if I just have another black yarn that might... I have some Volmise in a black yarn, in a black colour. I might make one in a black. Um, that could be a, a good um, braless knit because I don't, I, if I can get away without wearing a bra, I do prefer to. Right, so that's whip number three, the Sophie scarf. Right, so my last two works in progress haven't seen, uh, had much attention. This is the Muscle Bra Hat by Solder Teague and I'm using Hedgehog Fibers um, Skinny Singles in, in an exclusive colorway to my local yarns store skein sisters and i'm using a 3.25 millimeter needle and i increased to 136 stitches that's all i've got left of the original ball and i have um some uh yarn that i had used for another project and then didn't like it um, for my sorrel and then um unwound so i do have plenty more and that's from the marker that's all the progress i've made so only a few because I, I guess i've done a lot on the socks and the sophie scarf so um i think what i will do is before i cast on any more socks or any more another sophie scarf i'll try and get a bit more progress on this one because it would be you know i kind of wouldn't mind finishing this one and start i'm getting a bit you know like if something's just been on the needles for too long you just get a little bit 
it starts off really gorgeous and then it just becomes a bit tired and like it's nothing wrong with this it's beautiful it's looking really really pretty it'll make a great hat um so i just need but i need to make some uh forward motion on that and then my last one is exploration station and the reason i haven't um worked on this is because i'm actually at the brioche stage and i, I need a chunk of time and I haven't sort of had just a solid chunk of time to knit without distractions. So this is Exploration Station by Stephen West using Madeleine Tosh, Tosh Merino Light for most of the yarn. Um, that's Neon Peach and Antler, which is what Stephen used. Um, I'm using Graphite, which is similar to El Greco, it's just the dark colour. And then this is Swiss Yarns in like an, a peachy sort of apricot colourway. Um, which is similar to reindeer. I'm really liking how that's coming along and I'm looking forward to doing the brioche. I just need a bit of, you know, a chunk of uninterrupted time um, because you know, I need to sit and watch Stephen's video again. I've made five, I've done five rows or two and a half rows if you, because they're, you know, you have to go and then go again. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I, I am really liking it. I'm looking forward to finishing it. Um, I do wear scarves and shawls quite a lot actually. Um, I do really enjoy um, wearing them and I think this will make a really lovely wardrobe piece with like, I do, I like them having like a bit of a pop of color. So yes, I, um, promising myself I will knit on this this week. Uh, I hope, um, certainly by the holidays, if not this week, next week. Um, yes, so fingers crossed. Anyway, that's my works in progress. And moving on to, uh, let me see, I'm going to get changed into my friend from the vault. So this is my friend from the vault, which if you're new here, it's a segment where I talk about a knit that I made previously. And this is the Traveller Tunic by Hohi Locatelli. And I use Madeleine Tosh DK in the colorway Vermilion. I used um, four mil needles for the body and 3.5 mil needles for the ribbing. Now I actually started this dress in 2015, finished it in a couple of months, but it had long sleeves and it was extremely fitted. It was like, you know, um, waist decreases, hip increases. So it was very hourglass. And I, ne I think I wore it once. I just felt too self-conscious. It was too much of this color all over my body and very fitted and figure hugging. So I thought, you know, it was a lot of knitting to just go, well, I'm not gonna wear it all and rip the whole thing out. I really like this yoke section. It's got this really um, reverse stockinette here and then these pretty braids here. So it's really, really lovely. Um, but I thought it was just, it was too warm. So it's a DK weight yarn and, and long sleeves. I just wasn't wearing it partly because it was too warm and partly because it was just like, here I come, very bright pink. Um, so cutting it off at the short sleeves made it more wearable, also just less of the pink, you know, you've got a bit of just skin color as well, just not too much of one thing. And, and I also changed, I ripped it back up to about here, like where I started the waist decreases and I made it a line. So I'll stand back and show you. So it's not super, like it's not super flary, but I just went straight out, um, you know, on the side, and oh, let me back a little bit more. Um, so it's about knee, about knee length. I'm on my tippy toes so you can see me. Um, yeah, so there's like room. Um, it's not too, um, I don't know what kind of ease there is around the hips. Uh, I'll put in the down bar, I'll put some measurements in the down bar as to what the bust, circum bust circumference ended up being as to how much ease there is at the bust. But there's just a little bit at the waist and I think I actually can feel like it's probably a bit of negative ease at the hips, but not too much. Right, so um, yeah, and I wear it. I wear it much more now. So I think it's pretty short in the arm side, but I think that's because my row gauge was definitely different. So my, I can't remember what the yarn for the pattern, what the recommended yarn was, but my row gauge was definitely shorter, and I could have added more more rows, but. I think it ended up just being fine and it's just quite fitted. So it's quite fitted up here and then it um, and then it comes out. So yeah, and I think for me, it's just the right amount of, because it is quite a bold color, but it's not too much. Yeah, and I really like it. So, it, and this kind of thing is very much a standard work thing for me. The only downside of knit dresses is not having pockets. Um, other than that, they're so comfortable to wear their, um, you know, wool and breathable. So this is 100% wool. And I don't need to wash them 
every time. This one probably gets a little bit more wash because it's so close up to the armpits. But generally, I don't sweat much in them and there's a lot of air conditioning at my work. So yeah, anyway, really nice and I feel very comfortable. And I'm actually now wearing a normal bra, which is much more comfortable for me for the rest of the episode. Uh, I don't think there's anything um, else that I would say. Just a really nice, well-written pattern. Hohe, Hohe's patterns are awesome. Right, so um, the next segment is actually um, one that I was going to do last week but completely forgot. I just sort of missed it in my notes and that's what has caught my eye. So it may not be something that's in my plans but it's something that I've noticed and thought, oh, that's really pretty. And um, some of them, um, Beck has sort of, uh, my friend Beck, she's seen quite a few things and, and sort of sent me a message and said, what do you reckon about this one? So um, most, most of these are ones that she's sort of draw my attention to. So one is Ariana by Amy Christophers and that is this really gorgeous granny square cardigan. So you, you crochet a bunch of granny squares and then the finishing all looks like knit ribbon. Um, so it's a bit of you know a blend of craft and yeah I'm not a huge crocheter but I can and I can't really follow a crochet pattern very well. So if I do end up making this, I probably will end up taking a class at Skein Sisters with Jane who teaches crochet. She's an awesome crocheter and she teaches like learner crochet and then whatever, a bunch of crochet classes there. So if I'm going to make that, I think I'll do a class with Jane to just have a bit of confidence um, before I do that. Yeah, but I just think it looks really cool. And, and a lot of fun, like picking colours and things. So that's the Ariana um, Ariana by Amy Christopher's. The, another top that um, uh, Bex um, drew my attention to was the Rota sleeveless top. And I also I remember seeing it on Jonna, on Kim and Jonna. And Bex actually making it. Um, and it's looking really good. I'm not I like how it looks, but I'm just not 100% sure how it would fit into my wardrobe. Because it's very holy, so you have to have something on underneath. Um, so that's probably my only second guessing with that pattern is how I would wear it and how I would style it like um, so what I probably do is have a look at more projects on Ravelry and sort of think oh okay that that's how I could wear it because I'm not very good at sort of seeing yeah what it would yeah what I, what I would wear underneath it and um, yeah how it would I mean I guess just a camisole but yeah I like how it looks I think it looks really cool um, but that's why it's just what has caught my eye not quite into projects yet um, the other patterns that have sort of look really interesting is the Everyday Attitude Top um, uh, by Suzanne Summer and I saw um, Leslie Friend from A Friend to Knit With had made a really cute um, black and white stripy version which looked fantastic. Um, so yes, that just caught my eye. I thought oh, I'll keep, you know, file that away, favourite it. Um, the Sailor, a few, and now these next few are, or well, next couple are um, by Veronica Lindbergh. Um, She's Kutabakika. She um, designed the Sailor Swift top and that looks really cute and it doesn't look like it uses much yarn at all. Um, again, that wouldn't be great for um, work because it's so racer, but it just looks really nice and doesn't look like it takes up too much yarn. And the other one, which is completely different, but I just, when I was looking on her, um, you know, on her patterns, the wishbone sweater looks really, really pretty with all this twisted, twisted rib and just looks gorgeous. So, um, and that would be, that's obviously much heavier kind of, um, completely different pattern. So, but that, that caught my eye as well. And I thought, oh, I'll keep an eye on that one and sort of think about yarn that might work for that. The other thing that's caught my eye, which is not knitting related, but, um, I've really been wanting, like I bought those jeans from the thrift shop that were high waisted. Um, but they're all very like skin, they're like stretchy and quite tight jeans. And I'd like a pair of high-waisted jeans that aren't, um, that are not stretchy, that are more like uh, either straight or with like a peg leg. And I've seen in some of Petite Knits, her um, photos that she puts, she has these really, she's wearing these really cute jeans that um, I guess you'd call them a peg leg, where they sort of come down and they, they taper at the ankle. Um, and I haven't seen anything like that in the stores, but I haven't really been looking hard. So, and I didn't see anything like that in the, sh at the thrift shop or I would definitely have tried them on. Um, so I'll have a bit of a look maybe when I'm at the mall tomorrow and see if I can see anything like that. Um, and the other thing though, I did notice there's a sewing pattern called the Stylark Bob Pants and they looked sort of, sort of similar. Um, they're not jeans 
like not de not a denim pant, but they kind of had that sort of look. So that if I ever sew again, um, that might be something that I might make and um, have in my wardrobe with that kind of look, that kind of tapered tapered look. Right, so that's it for what has caught my eye. My next segment is purchases and plans. So I'm putting this together because sometimes my purchases actually directly relate to plans. Well, I guess those two things usually go together. Um, so I have bought a few patterns this week and they are connected to my plans. So the first pattern that I bought was the Soho top um, by Kadri. Let me see if I can grab it. So that's this top here. Isn't that pretty? And I actually bought the yarn from Pearl Soho and that is um, Pearl Soho Sweetgrass in the colorway Rye Flower. And I need a swatch. Such a good girl. I was going to skip it. And then when I was looking at people's projects, um, one of the, you know, and I, I filter them by um, either, either most favorites or most helpful. You know, if I'm about to start knitting, I usually go for most helpful. And one of the people in the most helpful section was like, do not skip my most helpful tip. Do not skip the gauge swatch. So I was like, all right, I'll be a good girl. So I did a gauge swatch. Um, I haven't blocked it yet, so I will block it. Um, it's so soft. This is a cotton, al al cotton alpaca blend yarn, and it's really, really, look how beautiful that, it just looks so, and it feels so squishy. This top will be so nice to wear. And I think, like for me, I can actually, I could wear that to work because it comes out far enough. That with a pair of like um, suit pants, um, I think would look really, really nice. So um, I'm getting, the pattern says 20 stitches and 35 rows. And I just use the recommended needle size, which is a four millimeter. Instead of 20 unwashed, I'm getting 21 and a half. So a little bit tighter. And instead of 35 rows, I'm getting 39. So a little bit shorter. So mine, if I knit as the pattern, if it stays that way, mine will be a tiny bit smaller. But I will definitely, because it's garter, which is likely to grow, I'll um, wet lock it for sure. And then I think I'll probably just use that as like a little mug rug afterwards. I don't think I'll need the yarn um, because I've got three skeins, which I think is plenty. And oh, you hold the yarn double. So it's a fingering weight yarn and I've got 1200, three skeins is 1200 meters. And the pattern says I'll use about a thousand. So I've got plenty that the swatch, I shouldn't need to unravel that. So yes, so that's, um, and purchase and plan and I think that might even be my next cast on. The next purchase slash plan is the Kuta top and so that's by Sari Nordland. I don't always print off the front cover because it's just too much, uses too much ink um, but it looks really pretty and that is, I've bought some tin Lena for that so I've got two skeins of that in the, I don't know what the name is but it's like a ra maybe raspberry pink or something so I think that's gonna look oh, wrong way that's gonna look really pretty I haven't swatched for that yet but I bought the pattern so one step closer um, another purchase was the Thea top by Suzanne Muller Muller and it, the recommended yarn I do have is Sanders Garn Lena and now the tricky thing about this one so this also is 20 stitch gauge 20 stitches and 26 rows because it's stockinette and on a four mil needle so i've started a swatch on a four mil needle i haven't actually measured it yet i've done a um like a pearl turning row and then i'm going to try it because it seems a little i don't know maybe a little bit open i haven't washed it yet but i'm curious to see what it's like on a 3.75 mil needle um, because the Thea top, the smallest size is 35 inches and that's going to be too, that's, that would be three inches of positive ease for me. And I think that's too, that's too much for me. So, um, I don't know that I have a huge amount of yarn, um, cause I've got four skeins, um, which is only 440 meters. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to start using this as a dish rag, although if it ends up being like surplus I will um because it is cotton and linen um so it would work fine as a maybe a face washer uh anyway uh what I was going to say is I'm really hoping that my gauge is a bit tighter um so that I don't have to modify the pattern because I would need I'd like to take about 10 percent out of it and have it finish more like 32 inches so no ease or a slight bit of negative ease 
So if I can, that may work if my gauge is smaller, that might get me there. If my gauge state is around 20, I think I'll have to modify the pattern. Um, yeah, so that's that's not my next cast on. I think the Soho top will be my next one. That one, this one, I need to finish the swatch and do some math. Um, either way, I've got to do some math because I don't want it to be 35 inches. So that's my sort of three things that I've bought new patterns, bought the patterns for, and are, you know, pretty actively going to end up on my needle soon, hopefully. The next one is Alpine Bloom, and I'm going to use Madeleine Tosh Nocturne. I've got two skeins of this and Peach Bellini. I'm going to put those two together. I think that will be really pretty for the... Um, and I actually saw someone with something similar to these two colors and it looks really nice one thing i think i will do though is i'm not a huge fan of the edging i don't really like the neckline and the frilly lacy stuff it's just not really my jam um but i saw um vanessa kind she is making this fabulous i'll put a picture up fabulous version in this bright green and pink it's amazing and she's done a twisted rib neckline and i think that's what i would do i do like a good twisted rib i think it will suit the pattern um and i would like it better than the better than the lace so i haven't purchased the pattern yet but i think i will um i've just got other stuff to do first and um but i think that's going to be on my needles and i'm and i'm you know enjoying watching people's projects filter through on um, Instagram and Ravelry so that's but that is a coming up plan um, the half and half wrap I haven't swatched yet so um, I got these two yarns from Pearl Soho that's um, vintage Celadon and red poppy um, as I mentioned last week I'm not I, it wasn't what I was expecting but I I actually am really liking it I haven't swatched yet but that will be my next step to do a swatch make sure I'm happy with the modifications with the eye cord edging um, and you know that I just like the two colors together and yes I will that's that is upcoming a half and half wrap the next thing maybe not in this order but the next thing on my next thing on my list is pink velvet now I did say that I had some yarn some Volmeyer's twin in stash in the colorway Feldmouse now this is the yarn if you've been watching for a while I had half knit I'd almost finished knitting a sock and it wasn't this yarn, it was in, um, it was this colour, Feldmouse, but in 100% not twin. So this is Volmeyer's twin, which is a little bit heavier. And I've knit this before and I get 24 stitches over four inches in this yarn. And that is the pattern gauge for Pink Velvet. So I actually think those two are perfect together. And I did like a little photo of them in monochrome and like in a black and white, and there's definitely enough value difference. This is significantly darker than this. So it should get a nice pop um, because this is the swatch. I'll just grab it. Um, this was what I was originally going to use was the gray. And I just think the brown, and obviously Andrea's version is brown. And I just think that's a much nicer, much nicer combination. So now that I've found the yarn, um, I'm like I'm much closer to making the pink velvet and I've got plenty I've got two skeins of that and I think it only calls for 660 meters for my size and only one of these so hopefully that will be enough um, well it should be like it says just one skein and if I have to rip that out for a little bit extra I can so hmm, I'm excited about that one um, and just so excited to have found the yarn and I've had this yarn in stash for I don't know maybe eight years nine years it's just been, it's just waited, waited for the right pattern. So I think that's going to be fantastic. Um, I haven't yet, so this is that Habu Bamboo that I swatched that I was trying to figure out a, um, a pattern for. I am, I could do the anchor tee. Beck suggested the rotor sleeveless top, but I think I have probably a bit too much yarn for it. Um, and I think, I actually think I would like that more in a tee. Um, so I think that will be the anchor tee by Petite Knit, I'm pretty sure. So that's that's got you know like mentally I know what I'm going to make with that. I haven't purchased that pattern yet, but one day like when I'm ready to. Um, camisole number four is another. Um, I have actually already purchased that pattern, um, and I've got the yarn. That's the knitting for olive pure silk in the colorway raspberry pink. So that is I've got only two skeins of that. So that should be a pretty even though it's a very fine yarn though. So, but it is that's an upcoming plan. 
um, the Carnaby skirt in this um, chocolate brown Rowan felted tweed that um, the Carnaby skirt's a free pattern on Nitty. Um, I think that's going to be really nice. And what else? Um, a mini mock neck tank in another one of that in this pink. I'm a little unsure if I will use this because this is a little bit heavier than the last one I made. So I'm sort of second guessing that plan. The mini mock neck tank uses a fingering weight yarn and this is a sport weight. And I have a feeling that might just end up being too big in this yarn. So I might have to find a different project for this. The, the last thing um, which is on my plans and I kind of parked, which is the field sweater. And because I was going to use this um, Issia yarn, um, Highland and Silk Mohair. And I just, I love that in that swatch, but I started doing the grains. Where are they? I started doing the grains and I just found I wasn't enjoying it with the two strands held together. And yet I know a lot of people have done this, right? Like, um, I can't remember the, her name, but the version that has the two tones, the sort of the white with the, she just does amazing projects. Um, I'll put her name down below and a picture of her version. She did it and heaps of people are doing it with like a mohair and a single ply yarn. Maybe just when I did it, um, you know, I just wasn't being as conscious of being as loose as I think I needed to be. Um, but there's more videos, people are putting videos up. And I think the designer Camilla Vad actually put a video up of knitting the grains and it didn't look that bad. Although she wasn't doing the, she was just creating the grains. She wasn't closing them up with the knit three together. Look, there's not that many rows for the grains. So I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm thinking again about using this for it. Now my gauge is a lot finer. It's 23 stitches instead of 20, but I could just go up a size or just even the smallest size is something like 36 inches, something like that. So the smaller size might just come down to sort of no ease for me and I don't have to do anything different. Yeah, anyway, I just think that's such a pretty, I love that, I just love these two together. And I feel like instead of trying to find another yarn for it, I just think this is this will be really beautiful. Um, yeah, so I think I'm I think I'm moving back to I will use this for it. Um, but obviously for us here in the southern hemisphere, we're coming into summer, so I'm not in a huge rush for a you know mohair um, blend sweater. But it is kind of it's coming back to me for plans, and I've already bought that pattern, so. Yes, so that's, I know that's lots of plans, but you know, I just, I move through them. Um, you know, I finished the pie camisole and I don't think that Soho top will take, I mean, it's Garda, it might take a little bit longer, but Garda, like it's just, although it will become Garda in the round towards the bottom, that will be a bit slower because it will be knit a row, pearl a row. Anyway, that's kind of, yeah. Anyway, they're all exciting. I'm happy like this. No, it's not a race. I'll get to them eventually. There's lots of plans, but it's nice to have. It's better than sitting here going, I don't know what to knit. I've got lots I can knit. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's my purchases and plans. My next little section, which is the hidden whips basket, I'll just briefly mention. So this is the skirt that I over dyed um, into this fabulous red color that didn't work because um, I ended up like it pulled too much in one section and there wasn't enough room. So I am going to, I'm going to um, spotlight tomorrow and I'm gonna pick up a purple. So hopefully it'll have to be a pretty dark purple. So because I wanna, I wanna make one in this brown color, I'll, I'll try over dyeing this in a dark plummy purple color and hopefully like that's pretty dark there. So it's gonna have to be a pretty dark, like um, anyway, it's worth a try. I don't know what it is, but that is really blowing out my, having that right near my face. Look at that. It's amazing what happens with, anyway. Um, so I won't get anything more out of the basket um, because I'll see how I go with um, over dyeing this purple. Probably, probably not next weekend, maybe the weekend after, but I'll at least purchase the dye hopefully tomorrow. Right, the knit along, the knit along, the knit along finished um, and I uh, didn't have all my, I wasn't organized enough to have everything last week to announce the winners. So before I announce the winners, I just wanna show the last few projects that were on Instagram. So um, inspired by Fiber, she's making some beautiful, she might've finished them by now, some beautiful colorwork hats. 
which I would like to say, if you've never done color work before, a hat is a great first project because it's not too big, you know, small circumference. Um, I'd usually just do it in this section here where there's no decreases and then, you know, um, anyway, that's when I used to teach feral knitting at the yarn store. That was the, that was how I got people to um, learn to do feral knitting was to do just that sort of like a little band there. Um, anyway, so sorry, back to what I was talking about. So inspired by fibers, making these color work hats and this gorgeous Scandinavian scarf, like just amazing, so pretty. Um, Kim has made the Felix cardigan for her mum in Drops Air, and that looks really beautiful. Uh, Catherine finished a Pure Joy shawl by Hohi Locatelli, and this really caught my eye. I think I'd like to, um, I'd like to make this. Um, it reminds me of Dotted Rays, but is a better two color version because you've got sort of just the, you know, the colors, one color sort of demark demarcating the sections and then a big band at the end. So the Pure Joy shawl looks really pretty. I'm quite, I'm quite keen to make that actually. Um, Julie made a tankard tee. And what else we've got? Sandra, Sandra is knitting another cumulus tee. Now that is a big project and that is a big thing to make a second version. I would like to make another one because I like my first one, but making a second one, I'm gonna wait a little bit before I make a second one. Anyway, she's making another one. And then um, 100 Years in the Making is knitting a Felix cardigan. So that was the last of the um, projects that um, that I can that I've been able to find by searching on the hashtag. Now you might have used the hashtag and it may not have popped up for me, um, but they're all the ones that I've been able to um, see that have been put up on Instagram. So thank you everyone for joining in, and drum roll da 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 for the winners. So the three people that um, are winning a pattern um, is Anne Nitz, who's Annie. Knit Knack 2019, who's Michelle, and Joyful Makes, who made that Pure Joy Shawl, who's Catherine. So if you could contact me on Ravelry, that's the best, that's where I'd like you to um, get in touch with me. If you're on Ravelry, I'm Tash Balaz. Um, I'll put my name down in, um, below. That was my maiden name. Um, it's Balaz, but like easier to say Balaz, Tash Balaz on Ravelry. And um, if you're not on Ravelry, can you contact me on Instagram and we'll figure out another way because um, if you just let me know what pattern you'd like me to, to gift you on Ravelry, up to $10 US. So thank you everyone for joining in the knit along. Um, it was really a great way for me to be able to, to find new people who are, or people who are watching on Instagram and get to sort of have you in my feed so, and get to see what you're making. So thank you. Um, right, other craft? There is none this week. Um, and I'm hoping in the school holidays, I've got a week and a half left of school and then I've got two weeks of holidays. I've got quite a bit of work to do in the holidays, preparing um, for a new class that I'm, uh, that I'm teaching, but yes, fingers crossed, I'll get some sewing done in the holidays. Right, so that is, I have talked a lot today. I don't know where I'm at in time because I've had a couple of, um, a couple of segments, but yeah, if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to do a little personal stuff at the end, but um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week if you're signing off now. Right, so the personal stuff. So my in-laws arrived last Thursday. Um, that's been really lovely spending time with them. We've been eating so well. They, um, they drive when they're here and they get themselves, they're actually out at the grocery store now picking up stuff for dinner tonight. Um, so on the day they arrived, they made enchiladas and um, tostadas, oh, they're so good. Um, we've had chicken tortilla soup, we've had homemade pizzas, although my husband makes that, but you know, like we're, we all get involved in that. Um, oh, last night we had this thing called Marry Me Chicken. It was so good, it was delicious. I'm gonna put that, um, a link to the recipe in, um, I have to get that off my mother-in-law, she's on it, because they've been cooking and taking the kids to tennis and work and school and everything. So it's been um, lovely spending time with them and great for the kids spending time with them too. And nice for me to have a bit of help in taking people places. So yeah, so we've got, and to, um, I guess that's it for, oh yeah, and we watched baseball. Paul and Zach started um, summer baseball. They had their first game last, Sunday. They didn't win. Um, it was a close game, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Anyway, so that was last Sunday and that's that will be every weekend now for, um, except for Christmas. 
Um, and this week coming up, I have reports due this afternoon. They, this afternoon's ones don't have any comments, thankfully, but there's still a lot of like, um, there's still a bit for me to do. So I've got that to do. And tonight we're going to watch um, the local musical production of School of Rock at um, the, um, it's only about 15 minutes away. And one of like one of my colleagues is in it and a number of kids at my school are in it. So that will be, that should be fun. All eight of us are going. So my mum's going, my in-laws and the whole, our five. So it'll be like all of us going there tonight. So that should be good. Um, Zach's got his first proper shift at KFC. He's done a couple of training shifts, but he's got his first shift tomorrow night. That's why I'm going to, because he works um, at KFC at the big, like near Spotlight, like at a big mall nearby. It's about half an hour drive away. So I'll go, I'll go, he finishes at eight o'clock and Thursday night is late night shopping here. So I'll go a bit early and pick up, hopefully pick up some dye. And Alex has got a necklace that broke. So, and she wants me to pick up some jewelry wire or whatever. So anyway, I'll, I'll do that and um, get him on the way um, and then come back. So that will be, so that will be a bit more driving now that he's getting more shifts at KFC. Um, and also that's the other thing coming up. He turns 16 on Monday. And when you're 16 here, you can get your driver's license. So on Tuesday next week, he's got his L's booked. So if he gets his L's, there'll be, then it will be like another year of um, building up your logbook. So I don't know what it's like overseas, but you have to get 120 driving hours before you can go for your provisional license when you're 17. So that will be, there'll be a lot of driving to his work and back um, coming up for me. Uh, what else is happening? Um, oh, I'm teaching at the yarn shop this Saturday. I've got two classes. I'm doing toe up socks and finishing techniques. So, and both classes are full. So there's six people in each. So that will be that will be fun. That will be that will be busy. That's six hours of teaching. So I'm pretty wrecked by the end of that. So I think I'll just be, you know, well I'll have my in-laws here, so they will have made dinner or whatever, and I'll be just falling in the door and just a glass of wine and eat and relax on Saturday night. Um, one thing I will mention actually about the finishing class, I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, but when um, I get people to knit swatches for the finishing class and in the homework, um, so they actually have to come with their swatches and we seam them, but in the homework I said to knit stocking stitch or stockinette stitch, which is knit a row and purl a row. Um, but because I've just specified stockinette stitch, sometimes I've found when people come to class, they've actually slipped every stitch of the first, like slip the first stitch of every row or knit the first stitch of every row, whether it's a knit row or a purl row, because that's their habit. But of course that's that's not what you want when you're seaming. So um, I just had to quickly call the yarn store and say, can you just remind people when they're doing their swatches, don't, you know, don't slip the first stitch, don't, you know, don't do anything but just knit a row, purl a row. So I've got to change the homework um, instructions. You know, because what I think, and this is pattern writing, right? What I think someone should do versus what they actually, they think they should do is not always the same. So you wanna be really, really clear. So instead of saying knit stock and knit stitch, I need to say knit a row, purl a row, you know, row one, knit a row, row two, purl a row, repeat rows one and two, and then even say, do not slip the first stitch or do not modify from this, do exactly what this says, because we need that for seaming. So. Yes, so fingers crossed everyone, all six people. I've got a couple of spare swatches just in case someone has done that and they can use mine, but then um, they, they don't get to take their swatch home with them, which I think is really nice. So yeah, so that's this weekend. Uh, that's this Saturday. And then Sunday, Paul and Zach are playing baseball again. So that's there's a lot coming. And then Monday is Zach's birthday. We'll probably go out for dinner for that. So just, you know, his choice. Yeah, so a bit a bit coming up. Um, oh, and I've got a lesson observation tomorrow. So I'm doing experience teacher, which is like bumping up to another level. Um, and so someone's coming to watch my year 10 class tomorrow. I'm teaching a class on conditional probability and independence. If anyone's into, interested in maths, that's, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing tomorrow, which is, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, but that's what I'm gonna do when I finish recording. I need to get that lesson, because it's a, a lesson old, but they need to like make sure I've hit five different standards. Um, I've gotta make sure everything's kind of, you know, all the I's are dotted and T's crossed. Right, so if you've made it to the end, thanks for watching. I think this has been, like, I'll see as I edit it, but I feel like I'm really happy with my knitting for the last week or so, and um, got some really interesting plans coming up, so. Yeah, um, and I wasn't sure I was even going to record today, and there you go. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.